everybody. Welcome to the show. Today I get to share with you a conversation that I had with none other than Becker. And today's topic is specifically about how to make money as a photographer. Here's what I've noticed in my career in the photography industry. A lot of photographers will come in, they burn bright for two or three years, and then they burn out. They go to some other profession, they go back to their old profession, they go back to working at Starbucks or whatever. I hope that's not you. But Becker and I dive into this subject pretty deep, and we talk about why photographers struggle so much to make money and make a sustainable business. I hope you'll enjoy this conversation, and join us in the comments below. Tell us what keeps you from setting your pricing to a place where you're sustainable. What prevents you from really succeeding this year, and how are you going to overcome it? Thanks for joining us. Enjoy the show. Becker, so good to see your face, man. Uh, You've always... What's up? Yeah, you know... We've always had a, a good rapport, and I've always liked hanging out with you, even though we don't get a lot of hang time. But I have one question yeah. for you. Do you remember that time in Vegas? Which time? I remember hanging out with you in San Diego once, and we went to like a Chipotle or something like that. But there's many times <laughs> in Vegas, and I'm not exactly sure what you're referring to. I know. I just thought that might get your attention. Uh, the time <laughs> in Vegas that I'm talking about is the time that we were you you pulled together a closed door session to share with some industry people about what you were doing. And at the very end of it, you said, guys, I have this gigantic shower. Let's see if we can fit everybody inside of it. Yes. And I think we, we got 12 people in the shower. I do remember that. Yes. Only 12. It seemed like it seemed like so many more, but it was just a crazy kind of moment, a Vegas moment. Yeah. And you know, it was all good, clean fun. It was, it was, it was good. Well, so, you're in the shower, so it's very clean. <laughs> exactly, my man. So today we are going to talk about, I think, a subject that needs to be talked about a lot more often in our industry, making money as a photographer. Um, just as a quick intro, uh, in my business, I talk to photographers every single day, new photographers, new clients, um, maybe people have been in the industry for a while. And there's a common thread. A lot of them come to me with questions about how they should do their pricing, how they should position their business. Um, And I do my best to help them out. But it always pains me to see a trend in our industry. And in my business, specifically in in the editing business, I see a big churn rate in in clients. So I'll maybe reach out to a client that was uh, maybe one of my top clients for a year and I hadn't heard from them in a while and I'll just reach out and say, Hey, what's going on? Uh, you know, we haven't heard anything from you. Is everything okay? And they'll go, yeah, it's cool. But I just kind of, I'm phasing out my photography business. I just wasn't really making any money in it. So mm. Becker, I would love to hear your thoughts on why photographers have such a high burn rate. Why do they have such a hard time making money in this industry? Well, again, that's that's the $64 million question. And again, I've been doing this. This is my 21st season as a wedding photographer. That's and amazing. what I what I've noticed is it's very cyclical. You know, it goes up and sometimes you're hot and then you're down and then you're hot and then you're down. And then it just like you know, some years you'll shoot seven weddings in October, and then the next year you'll shoot two, and mm-hmm. the next year you shoot five. And it's it's just so hard to determine again, what's going to happen. And it, it, like, sometimes you'll go through like a group of friends, you'll shoot a bride. My, my favorite is like, you know, you shoot a, a wedding, you do a killer job. And then my favorite sentence in the world is like, hi, I was a bridesmaid in so-and-so's wedding. I'm like, yes. great. Which, which package do you want? Cause I know you're booking me. Cause we had a totally. great time. I love the pictures. We had killer rapport. I did a wedding in Italy once and there was a, uh, you know, there were eight bridesmaids and I shot five of their weddings. And the yeah. crazy thing is like two of them were already married. And then the one that I didn't get, I was already booked on her date. So I couldn't do it, but I would have, <laughs> I literally would have gone eight for eight if it was possible. But the other five I booked it. And, um, you know, that's always been my goal is like, Hey, t- do the, take the best pictures I possibly can give the clients uh, a, an outstanding experience, killer customer service and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But then what happens is like, you know, the last couple of years I've noticed like I'm shooting these weddings and the couples might be getting a little older and they're like the last friend to get married. So all the, mm-hmm. the bridesmaids and grooms are already married. And so it's like, I well, see. you're not getting a lot of referrals from that one. And it just, it just kind of depends. You know, I remember early in my career, I shot a wedding in the late nineties. Um, gosh, yeah. Next year will be their 20 year anniversary. They got married in 1998 Seth mm-hmm. and Jenny, 
Um, they got married February 21st, 1998. Look it up. It was a Saturday, I promise you. But it was one wow. of the things where I, there were 400 guests at this wedding, and they were a really young couple. They were like 20 and 21 wow. years old. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. And I'm like, who gets married that young anymore? Uh, my parents did. But, but, um, but like, <laughs> so there's 400 guests at this wedding. And then over the next like three years, Seth and Jenny referred me like 20 weddings, you know? So, wow. I mean, they, they were guests at this wedding and that wedding. And so I would take pictures of them at every single wedding that I was, that they, you know, referred me or whatever. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I've just followed these guys. And that's the thing. Like, like we're Facebook friends still. And I'm like, okay, their kids are like teenagers, you know, they're like <laughs> 17 years old. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's crazy. But, but again, sometimes you get clients that are like that, that are awesome. And then you get, you know, some clients like, oh, it's the older couple that's eloping or a second marriage or whatever. And so it's just, it, it really does depend. And I think, I think the, the, the companies that stick around and that last, again, you have there, it's, it's a lot of it has to do with um, more than just photography. You have to have a good solid business background and, um, you know, and that's what I've always tried to teach with photography. Like, like I know I'm not the best photographer in the world. I think I do a pretty good job. I think if you're looking for my style of photography, I deliver it consistently week in, week out. It's up to, you know, the clients and whoever else to determine whether they like it or not, you know, mm -hmm. but, but be, beyond that, like, I've always prided myself on giving a killer experience to my clients to make sure that they enjoy working with me, that we have fun on their wedding day and sure. I'm, you know, they actually enjoy having me around. And then afterwards it's like dealing with the albums and, and all the back end stuff and still maintaining those relationships. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I can't tell you, like, again, when I was, I used to do a lot more teaching for photographers and stuff like that, um, in years past, but it, it's one of those things where I, I can't tell you how many photographers, are really good photographers, but they really suck at business or right. they're really good photographers or they just suck at people. You know, they, they don't yeah. have good people skills. And I, I've and, heard it said in the creative industry, actually that, you know, I mean, just in any artistic industry that you can have people who are great artists, but terrible business people. And then you can have great business people who are terrible artists. I think that there's a lot in between as well. I think that there are people who are pretty mediocre at business and great artists or, you know, vice versa. Um, I think one of the things that really saddens me in our industry is that, um, you know, it's a very heartfelt kind of trade, right? Being a photographer sure. oh, um, is a very heartfelt yeah. kind of thing. So, you know, a lot of our clients are very in touch with their emotions and they, they, they touch and feel their way through this experience and they make a great experience, like you said, uh, for their clients. But when it comes down to business, when it comes down to setting a price for their services, they're so timid why do you think photographers are so timid to set a price that allows them to have a sustainable business well uh, there's a lot of factors one lack of confidence and they mm -hmm. just don't believe in themselves or they don't um you know people I, again i i was like this like starting out i hate being like a salesperson i i always hate sure. like if i go to if i go to a, a department store to go shopping for clothes and the salesperson is really pushy it drives me crazy <laughs> yep. when i go shopping for a car and they're just trying to like i'm like dude just back off so i hate when when i feel like i'm being sold or pressured and mm -hmm. so i've always never wanted to pressure my clients but on but to that end like i maybe i'm not the best closer or the best salesperson or whatever mm -hmm. but then what i learned over the years like again the hardest part of the whole wedding photography business is getting booked you know right everything else is, after that is easy like the, getting the first <laughs> check is hard getting the second check's easy because the second check you just say oh your balance is due you owe me money <laughs> getting that first check, there's some finesse there's some skill like you have to sell yourself you have to get them to believe i i've said this for the longest time photography is wedding photography especially is one of those things that's really weird to pay for because you mm. sometimes you put down a big chunk of a deposit you know 25 30 50 percent or whatever and you're asking for this money a year before the event takes place. So, sure. so again, that's why it's important to sell a brand and to build like a reputation and say like, oh, hey, look, you're going to pay this money now, but you know I'm going to show up. And you right. know, not only am I going to show up, but I'm going to deliver the style of work that I'm showing you. And you're, mm -hmm. you can reasonably expect that I'm going to give you this kind of work and it's just going to be you in the pictures. But it, again, that's kind of a hard thing where it's like, yeah. uh, yeah. And if, if you're starting out in photography and you don't really have that defined brand and you don't have that confidence and you're trying to sell this, you're like, um, please pick my package. And, you know, and it's like, it's like people smell fear and it's like, sure. uh, if, if you don't believe in yourself, nobody's going to. Yeah. So it's like, you have to do that. And then the one other point is I think a lot of photographers, they just, um, literally pull the numbers out of their ass when they're trying to right. set their prices. They don't have an idea. They're just like, oh, so-and-so is charging this. 
uh, I have the same camera or I'm just about as good as them. So they just, they just throw prices together, not knowing what it's going to cost to get their wedding edited or build the album or uh, the, if the album supplier um, increases their prices right. or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then they they got to count for their time and they go like, oh, you know, this is so much for, it's only an eight hour wedding. And it's like the clients don't realize how much work goes in on the back end and all that totally. stuff. So, yeah. so some photographers was- don't have a clue. There was a time when I was shooting weddings. I shot weddings for about seven or eight seasons. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember having a very, very high end client, somebody who was, you know, ultra wealthy and, Mm -hmm. you know, had the most beautiful home mansion in Point Loma. It's overlooking, you know, San Diego Bay. Everything was amazing. You know, big giant gate to get onto their property and everything. They had been referred to us. And, um, so we went in and talked to them about, uh, you know, this was old school days, right? Film days. And so we had like literally walked in with albums to show them. And so we're showing this couple our, uh, our work and uh, their mom and dad are there and, and, you know, and it's going well. But when it came to the pricing, I felt like there was almost this element of like their standard was so high for what they were planning on spending. And our package pricing was so low that there was some gap that couldn't be reconciled in their mind like they they said they liked our work and then maybe they did maybe they didn't i don't know they, they said they liked our work but they didn't hire us and they didn't exactly tell us why can you go back to your early days and think about maybe some missteps that you made or go back to your early days and think about something that clicked for you um, and something that changed the direction of your path as a business owner yeah, well, you make a really good point, but that was the thing. When I started out, like, again, I remember doing weddings for, like, uh, one of the – my mom's friends was getting remarried. That was actually my first wedding, and then I mm-hmm. shot for uh, – most of my early weddings – I was a teenager when I started. I was still in high school when I shot a lot of these <laughs> weddings. So, like, a lot of people – they I didn't – I didn't – I wasn't very trustworthy because I didn't have any experience or anything like that, and I didn't know what I was doing, and I was literally just, again, pulling those numbers out of my butt, and – and charging. And it wasn't until I realized like, okay, once I figured out, okay, a little bit about my style. See, I actually started out as a fashion photographer. I was in, you know, Southern California. I was shooting all the pretty people, all the actors, headshots, the models, portfolios. And I learned how to photograph people and make them look good. And then I thought like, Hey, well, let me just uh, apply this to weddings and make the brides look really good. Mm -hmm. And then still come in with like a a journalistic approach. But I I took a workshop way back in the day, Dennis Reggie, one of the godfathers of wedding photography. And it was like, it was all about the wedding photojournalism and but then and i learned that from him but the most important thing that i learned from him was instead of selling pictures um instead of like charging a small fee to shoot and then selling an album or get him to buy eight by tens or wall portraits or anything like that it was like charge as an artist like charge a fee for your time and talent and then make everything else available you can sell it if you want or you know if they buy it great if not no big deal but when i when i got grasped that concept it mm-hmm. was like oh okay yeah i want to get paid for my time and time. this is what i'm gonna get paid to get out of bed and do what i do and then mm-hmm. if they buy an album awesome and if they don't who cares i already got paid a really good rate to do it and, you know, of course, I like when they order albums, they order extra stuff because that's just extra money. But that was always the gravy. But, like, mm-hmm. let me just get the the main meal and, like, let me get my thing done. So, again, opposite problem to what you had. Um, and I, I've had friends that have told me that exact same thing. They drive up in the full-size Range Rover. None of that Range Rover sport <laughs> bull crap. You know, they have the big Range Rover, the $100,000 car. Yeah. And then they show your package. And, like, your top package is $3,000. And they're like, well, we wanted to spend at least ten. It just because, doesn't match their budget. Yeah. Yeah. It, do, it doesn't. It's it, again, people, again, there's a perception a lot of times like, well, if you charge more, you must be worth it. And that's what I did. So I learned that from Dennis and I started charging as an artist. And so very early on in my career, my first year, I booked like 61 weddings. And then at, my goal was to every single year shoot less weddings, but make mm-hmm. more money. So it was right. like, okay, keep raising the rates, keep raising the rates. And it got to the point where people were coming and meeting with me and it came my competitors and they're like, oh my God, you charge twice as much. And, mm-hmm. and, and a lot of people were like, well, and again, there's certain kind of clients that are just going to go, oh, well, we're going to go with the cheaper people because we don't value the photography. But the people who value yeah. it, like your clients in Point Loma in the fancy house with the guard gate and all that stuff, mm-hmm. like they, they, they want to buy the expensive thing. They're going to... They, they, they have all the money in the world. They could buy a sensible Hyundai with a hundred thousand mile warranty on the car, but they want a Mercedes <laughs> sure. Benz. You know, they want exactly. a fancy car. And so, so that was the thing. So I was always like raising the rates, raising the rates. And it was crazy just because again, one of my early 
photographer friend who I kind of helped mentor was a guy named Mike Cologne. <laughs> you oh, know? Yeah. And when, when Mike came to me, he was charging $1,000 to shoot weddings. And yeah. so, yeah. but he's a nice guy. And we kind of hit it off as friends. And so when people couldn't afford me or if I was booked, I would say, hey, go check out Mike. People were like, oh, I can't afford you. And I'm like, oh, go check out little Mike Cologne, as I used to refer to him. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it's always awesome. been about six inches taller than me. But it was one of those things like six months later, a bride called back and she said, he charges more than you do. And I was like, oh my gosh, whatever, Mike. But again, Mike <laughs> believed in himself. And yeah. we, Mike and I were playing on a softball team together. And a lot of us in Orange County at that time were charging right around $7,500 for photography. And we are mm-hmm. all very similar style, very similar abilities and talents and stuff. And one day, Mike just decided like, hey, I'm going to make myself $10,000 minimum package. Mm-hmm. And we were all at 75. So automatically, even though, like, again, he didn't have any more experience or anything like that. He just, he just put that up there. And automatically, people just assumed he was better because he started higher. And the mm-hmm. crazy thing is he went from a $10,000 minimum to a 20000 minimum in like one week. You know? Wow, that's amazing. He booked, one, he booked one big client destination wedding, uh, New England Patriot football player, and they booked a big package. So he just said, hey, might as well just start at 20000 You know, 10000 right. 20000 whatever. It's just money, right? It's just a number. But then that was kind of how he catapulted himself. And then he started booking celebrity weddings left and right and, and doing really well. And now he has this great following and he's been helping other photographers, but he still has a really prestigious uh, client list that, and he doesn't do a ton of weddings. He's not shooting 40 weddings a weekend or a year, but, but people yeah. who wants to do that anymore, you know, as we get older. Exactly. But, so it sounds like one yeah. of the elements of this is owning your art owning your talent, owning your business. Uh, I see far too many photographers who are fantastic. I look at their work and I'm blown away. I see them as up and comers, you know, maybe they're new on the scene or whatever. And I'm impressed by their work. Um, Yet there's this almost mentality of like, no, I'm not quite good enough to charge that much money. Um, In your story and telling Mike's story, it sounds like there's a moment where you guys just said, I'm going to own this my price is this price and you weren't going to waver on that. Um, was it scary to set your price at like 7,500 yes, as your base yes. price? There's a yin and yang thing. So I think again, it's like, uh, I, I have this shirt that I love that it says I'm really awesome at being humble, you know? So it's <laughs> like, y- you, you want to believe in yourself and you want to exude confidence. But at the same time, I always think of the Dos Equis commercials, like stay thirsty, my friend. You never want to mm-hmm. be so full of yourself where you just cocky, like you don't ever want to come across as arrogant or anything like that. And I know I had problems with that in the past. I, a bunch of other photographers thought I was just the cockiest guy. I ever, even though I really wasn't, I did believe in myself, right. but again, it's kind of this like self deprecating, uh, like yin and yang. So it was like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm the greatest and I'm the worst all at the same time. And I think that's actually a good place to be as an artist. Cause you do have to believe in yourself or, or nobody else is going to, but at the same time, it is scary. And you have to like use that fear as motivation to go like, Hey, I have to step up and justify these rates. I have to do a killer job. I have Mm -hmm. to nothing else. I I still think like, again, I've done all these weddings over the years, probably 600 weddings or getting close to that. Um, and I still show up at every wedding. I don't care if they're paying my smallest package or my biggest package or anywhere in between or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, my goal is to do the best job that I can. It's like, if I can outshoot myself, I'm not competing with other people. Mm -hmm. I'm not competing with Jerry or, or any of these guys, your Vaughn, any of these big guys. It's like, I just have to be better than I was last week. And if you'd stop worrying about what other people are doing and really concentrating on yourself, just get yourself a little bit better. And, and again, if you can increase your skill set or try this, and again, a lot of it too, it's not just the photography skills. I know a lot of photographers get geeked on the gear and they're all about this and megapixels and dynamic range and blah, 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 blah. It's like capture the moment and capture the emotion and stuff like that. And hopefully it's framed nicely. The cameras are pretty good these days. They're going to get you in the ballpark of a right. decent exposure. <laughs> and then with companies like yourself that like you're going to fix it up and throw it through Lightroom and do what it needs to do. Yeah. Like it's not hard to get a, uh, a, a decent exposure. So now it really just comes down to again, timing and composition and, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, stuff like that. So, so it's again, evolving that and trying to get better and sure. And, and, so and again, never being satisfied. Yes. You said something that kind of, uh, that, that I connected with, and that is, um, almost that sense of, um, responsibility when it comes to hiring staff, when it comes to hiring editors, one of the things that I noticed early on was that when I would bring a new editor onto the team, I would feel this 
almost immense pressure, this uh, responsibility. Now I have one more person on my team that I'm responsible for. And that always inspired me and pushed me to take the business to the next level. Because the last thing I wanted to do was come to the office one morning and realize that I've got to let somebody go. We just didn't have the business for it. You know what I mean? And so um, it sounds like kind of what you were saying too, is like, maybe there's a, a, um, a connection between raising your price and owning it. When you raise your price, all of a sudden you go, you know what? I have to perform at that level. I can't let my standard be any lower than that. Would you agree with that? For sure. I've always thought too, like you should charge a little bit less, a little bit less than you think you're worth. Okay. Mm-hmm. Not the other way around. Cause, cause that way, when you're meeting with the clients, you can come at them with this attitude. It's like, Hey, look, you know, I should be charging $5,000, but I'm only charging you $4,800. Like I'm giving mm-hmm. you a deal. It's not like, as opposed to where if you're, maybe you're only worth $4,000, but you're trying to do $5,000, you're trying to be like, Oh, please hire me at $5,000 or whatever. <laughs> you know, you should, you should just be like, yeah, Hey, this is what I'm doing. But, but again, I think, I think just anything you approach in life, your attitude and how you approach it is going to um, really have a, a lot to do with your results and stuff like that. So I mm-hmm. just think like, okay, hey, set, set your goals high and, and again, always trying to just step it up and step it up and never – and again, I'll be, be honest. Again, I've done this for, again, many years and I've gone through ups and downs and whatever. And I'm actually in a, in a weird space because, again, like I've done this 21 years. I actually moved to the Midwest and I'm actually transitioning – to let my wife be my boss, which is probably the smartest thing that I've ever done. But my, <laughs> my wife is actually running like the back end of our photography business these days because I'm concentrating on some other venues and other things that I'm working on right now. But I still love photography. So I show up sure. every Saturday and I still love shooting. I still love making pictures. I still love um, interacting with the brides. And I always like just, I always find one groomsman to pick on and I just pick on them all day and whatever. <laughs> I always pick the guy that I know can take it, but we have this rapport and this fun yeah. and, and we just, we just do this wedding. I still love doing that. And then again, my wife is now again, handling our back end and our album design and, and emailing the clients and all that cool. stuff, which is, which is great. Cause it's like, yeah. okay, she's awesome at it. And, um, and again, it just frees me up to still be passionate. But again, every wedding, and again, I don't care. I, again, I, I say like a lot of times I'm now the second shooter for my wife. It's like, hey, you be the boss. I'm just going to try to create cool images and, and have fun at these weddings and, and still deliver because that's the bottom line. Like you could be the best at branding, marketing, pricing, all that stuff. You can believe in yourself, whatever. But if you deliver crap, you deliver crap, you know? Yeah, exactly. So there's only so many ways to polish a turd. So it's like, look, you, you got to get good at your craft. You always got to be striving to get better. And again, don't compare yourself to other people because you, you'll, 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 it's so depressing when you start sure. like looking at other people's work and they're like, oh my God, their style's just so much. They see the world different than I do. And they just, they get these amazing images. And I love to see those images. I like to be inspired by them, mm-hmm. but then I, I, I don't ever try to copy them because I know I'll never do it as well as they, as far as that style, I have to be true to myself. Sure. You're going to have a different perspective. Yeah. And so you just, again, like it's cool to be inspired, but like really co- focus on what you do. And so that's what I do now. When I shoot my weddings, I show up to shoot the Becker style wedding photos mm-hmm. that I'm known for. And again, I can do it week in and week out, but then I'm always trying to, okay, let's just mix it up a little bit. Let's just try to tweak it a little bit. Cause I don't want it to ever get like cookie cutter or stale or sure. anything like that. But for me, the bottom line is happy clients. That's how you, yes. you want to build. You, that was your original thing is how do you make money in this business? Happy clients. Okay. Mm. And if your clients love you, it's really simple. They're going to refer you to their friends. And if they don't love you, they're not. You could take the best pictures in the world. But again, if they thought you were a jerk or if they didn't sure. like the customer service or whatever, like he was a great photographer, but you don't want that. But you want that. <laughs> he was an awesome photographer. Hire him right now. Yeah. You know, it's the whole big picture. And that's, again, it's like a cycle. And so you might be an awesome photographer. Cool. If the, if you have that God-given talent or natural ability, that's great. Well, now work on your business skills and your people skills. And then, yes. but then if you're really good at business and people skills, uh, now work on your photography. Like, okay, take some workshops, yeah. practice, yeah. get out, do some new things. And so wherever you're lacking, that's where you should focus on um, trying to improve that area of your business. Good. So break it down for us. I mean, we, we've, we've talked about this idea that sometimes photographers just pull a number out of a hat. They don't really know how to price their stuff. We've talked about having boldness in your pricing. How would you break it down for somebody nuts and bolts? Okay. So like somebody who might be listening to this going like, that sounds great, but what kind of advice can you give somebody? Um, 
when it really comes down to making your numbers, um, I mean, obviously when you come to, I feel like when you come to a point when you say, um, my packages start at 10,000 or my packages mm-hmm. start at 20,000, you've kind of crossed a threshold. At that point, you're just kind of like, you've established your number and really the nuts and bolts of the number don't really equate to like, oh, here's my monthly cost for this. There's my monthly right. cost. Because there's less of a concern in that regard right. on exactly the, the cost in that sense because you really have gotten to that point where you're charging as an artist um, and, and people are, are hiring you because they want your artistry. But for those who might be in the business for maybe two, three years now, maybe they feel like they're struggling Mm-hmm. One of the most common things that I hear people say is when they come to me for advice about pricing their packages and what do I see as like common pricing, I tell them you should price it at X or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they'll say, oh, I just don't think my market can bear that. I just, it's too competitive here. So break it down for people uh, in that regard. Like where do they start when it comes to actual numbers on their packages? How do they begin figuring out that number that actually gets them to a sustainable business uh where they can sustain their business okay shameless plug right here okay so i actually offer a service where i do pricing for photographers and it's not a, a course or a book where you just hear some things to start because everyone's different everyone's got a unique situation different market different skill sure. sets all that stuff but again if you go over to coachbecker.net it's 500 bucks it comes with a money back guarantee that you're going to actually make this money back right away and then some otherwise you don't you can get your money back because i'm so confident i've done this but what it really comes down to because whether you're a $2000 photographer $3000 are starting 4000 5000 whatever again there's a lot of factors that go into it but, but for me it comes down to um, I, I, I teach a system basically called added value. Mm-hmm. So again, like it's, it's a matter of like, you, you do have to know some of those basic things like your rent, your overhead, what you need to make every week, or uh, you need to make this per month. And if you do two weddings a month, if you're doing four weddings a month, it just depends on, you know, how popular you are, how many phone calls are coming in, all that stuff. But you have to have like, I, I call it like a, basically a get out of bed fee, you know? Nice. And so, so literally just show up and shoot, you know? And again, I, that's kind of, I know there's like, a, there's some people that don't like the whole shoot and burn thing or shoot and share or whatever. They're anti that. And that it's like, dude, don't worry about what other photographers think. Think about like what you need to do to put food on the table for your family. Mm-hmm. And the internet. So like, don't worry about that. And, and then if you think about like, again, you're creating value for your clients, you know? And again, if you're delivering killer photos and outstanding experience, people will eventually pay you. They'll start out. Sometimes it is hard getting going. So you might have to shoot a little bit, uh, for a little bit less, but then once you build a reputation and you start, start making a name for yourself and people are starting to do it, then again, you can raise the rates up like that. But again, I always have this basic package. And then what, what I do is the next package up, um, I actually put so much value in that package. The difference, you know, let's, let's just say, uh, again, going on with my, with my prices, like, so I have a $6,000 package, which is basically for me to show up and shoot. Mm-hmm. And then, and I always say it like this. I never say for $8,000, I say for only $2,000 more. Right. Uh, Cause again, but it's like now $2,000 more now comes with an engagement session, a couple extra hours on the day. And it comes with this beautiful album. You know, the first package is just the, the photos, you know, um, and so it's just one of those things. And then for and just $2,000 more on top of that, instead of saying $10,000, so, so right. that's a lot of money. But it's just like, well, now this is the most popular package because this comes with a nice album for you guys. And then it comes with a couple parent albums. And the mm-hmm. important thing was when you're selling your albums and you're selling your packages, you better have that exact album. Okay. And mm-hmm. I, I, if I would have been more prepared, I would go over across the room and, and hold the albums up. But but you don't want to be like, it's an album like this. And it's about that thick. <laughs> you want to sell it and you want to drop it in their lap. You yeah. go, hey, this is the album. And then, oh, the smaller package, well, that comes with this album. you know. But if they can touch it and feel it and, and actually experience it. Mm-hmm. And then, again, the whole time is, remember when you're selling your work, you think about it from your client's perspective. They're looking at a picture of strangers. You know, you know them because mm-hmm. you were at their wedding, but they don't. They're just looking at these random people, and they're projecting themselves in these photos. You know, mm-hmm. and they're going to see, oh, um, and again, if, if it's one of those things, like um, again, I remember consulting with a photographer early on who is now a really big time photographer, but she was just starting her business, and she showed me her sample album, and the photography was beautiful killer mm-hmm. little details, nice weather, killer lighting. Unfortunately, the bride was a little on the heavier set, 
side. Even though she was a really cute girl, she was just really heavy and she wore a dress that wasn't necessarily flattering for her. And I'll tell you, the biggest complaint I ever get in the world is brides hate how their arms look in photos. My arms sure. look fat. Mm-hmm. And that was the thing. So I'm looking at the sample album, even though the photography was beautiful, the bride's arms were kind of big. And so yeah. I'm like, if you show that to prospective clients, they're going to think that you're going to make their arms look fat mm-hmm. and no, nobody wants that. So I yeah. said, look, just throw that sample album away. Just literally throw it away. And even if it's, do you think that that it, photographer had some work to do though, in, in regards to posing and working? No, with their no, client to- no, 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 no. The, okay. the photography was beautiful. And again, it's just, okay. again, people are curvier and it's like, I used to be a big guy myself. So like, I know, I know about that. And like, yeah, I don't know how many pictures we've got four chins in it. And it's just like, <laughs> It's not the photographer's fault. No amount of lighting or trick this or that is going to do. Sure, but it's just what the potential client is projecting it, about. It's, it's how what, that's what they do. So, so how are they going to do it? So again, you want to you want to try to show. You know, it's a sad statement on of society, but it's just kind of how it is. People sometimes are shallow that way, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, you know, maybe some people see through it. But I think a lot of times people just go, "Oh, is she going to make me look heavy?" And brides sure. don't want that. So, so. So again, you, but you have to be able to show them the, the stuff and like the different albums. And then the other thing is, so I, I mentioned my $6,000 package, my 8,000, my 10,000, and I have a couple others, but actually my top package is a $21,000 package. And the crazy thing is that's actually what they see first. That's on the top of the price sheet. And sure. to be honest, like I've only booked that a couple times in my entire career. And yeah. it's one of those things where it's like every, like when they did book it, it was like, oh, they would have spent more. They would have spent 25 or whatever. <laughs> but the 21, yeah. the 21 is just a, it's a, it's a psychological thing. It's price anchoring. It's just like 21. Whoa, that's out of a lot of people's budget, Mm -hmm. but it makes my $15,000 package look halfway affordable. And it makes my $10,000 package look like a steal. And I book that $10,000 package all the time. So, so again, it's like, you, you can't just like randomly pick numbers. And again, if you're starting at $2,000, you can't have a $20,000 package because it just doesn't make sense. You know? Yeah. Uh, You want to be in that triple, you know, if you started a thousand, your big package is 3000 in that ballpark. But sure. um, that's why I tell people, hey, take advantage. I got a, again, money back guarantee. I will show you a killer pricing system and I will work one-on-one with the people to like go over their packages their specific in stuff. their market with their skill set, looking at their website, all those things that go into play because it really, it's about demonstrating value. And there's so many photographers, you mentioned it earlier, it's like sometimes the people come and they meet with you and they like your work and it seems like a pleasant conversation, but they don't hire you mm-hmm. for whatever reason. Sometimes that's the worst feeling in the world because you're like, why didn't they hire me? It's like getting rejected. Like, why didn't she call me back after our first date, you know, or whatever. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Funny follow up just- on that story. Uh, the, the couple who yep. we were consulting with, um, um, turns out the girl had a sister And um, she was going to have a second marriage. And the parents of these girls uh, actually did end up hiring me for their the other daughter's wedding. And the the wedding actually took place at that house in the backyard. Um, And so it was interesting because I sensed that in their ecosystem, maybe that Uh daughter, you know, was in, in a different bracket let's say like income, yeah. income bracket and yeah, it saying, made well, more sense wedding, you're not spending a ton of cash or exactly exactly yeah. yeah and then it just made more sense in the in the big picture of, of that wedding and um so it was kind of cool that we we did end up getting invited yeah. back uh, in a way like it for sure yeah but um so I, I guess big concepts that we've we've kind of covered today is um and you know help me out here too but it's it's owning it owning your art, owning your craft and owning your business. Um, it sounds like there's some strategy to the way you sell without being overly salesy. Right. I think, the way that I think kind that of- that's huge. But again, I just developed this whole, for me, my whole entire career, I've always used a very low pressure sales pitch. I think right. a lot of it, cause I, cause I fear rejection. Maybe if I was a better sure. closer, but like if I'm sitting there in the, in the meeting and I'm having this great time with this couple and this brilliant rapport, I've never once been the guy that pulls out a contract and says, hey, do you want to sign right now? Because then if they sure. say no, yeah. I will start crying or I'll throw up. <laughs> or like I, I, I always, every time I go, hey, it was so nice to meet you. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for coming. Give me an opportunity to show you what I do. Uh, yeah. Here's all the packages. Uh, if you'd like to hire me, boom, here's a self, self-addressed stamped envelope. Uh, with, you know, I get those custom photo stamps with one of my pictures on it and it's just oh, it's cool. part of the brand. 
And then they get this nice little package. It's like, please go home, talk it over. It's a big decision. I remind them that, hey, look, you're stuck with your photographer for the rest of your life. You're stuck looking at these photos. So go home and talk about it. And I think that maybe that confidence where it's like, look, go home and talk about it. I know you're going to do it. And it's really funny because over the years I've done all these things and sometimes you either hit it off with people or you don't, you know, I'll, sure. I'll uh, at the end of the meeting, I'll be like, oh, I'll get that check in two days. They'll mail it the next day and it'll show up the yeah. day after. Or, or it's like, oh, they're never going to hire me. You know, you just yeah. kind of can sense it after a while. And, and then it's like, if you don't get hired, I do maybe follow up and Hey, what could I have done different? Or was there a reason? Or was it, you know, a lot of times, oh, you just couldn't afford it. Okay. Well, yeah. it's a funny story. When I first moved to St. Louis, I was actually meeting with my first couple. And I, again, I didn't have like a fancy studio set up. So I just met them at a little coffee shop and stuff. And I, same thing, I go and I'm showing my work and they're loving it. We're having a great time. They're laughing at all my jokes. I pull out the price. The second that I see this, the guy like gets up and he just left. He just no left. No way. She, she was, yeah, it was like so like awkward and like, <laughs> But I'm like, did you not see my website? Like where my prices are? So apparently they missed that pricing page on the website. Oh, but hey, can't, you can't win them all. But that's the budget for our whole wedding. And I was like, well, uh, thanks for wasting both of our times. But you know, <laughs> again, you can't win them all. Yeah. So um, if we were to kind of summarize today, maybe it's um, maybe it's owning your art and craft, maybe owning your business, um, having some confidence, having a good level of confidence, refining your sales process to reflect you and your personality and, and value. Um, demonstrating value and, and adding value. Um, and, uh, and then it sounds like a huge part of it is the experience. You want your clients to be happy. You've got to provide a, a great experience for them. Yes. The standard is the given is that we've had, we have to deliver amazing images, but if you can create an amazing experience, that sounds like one of the keys to keeping that engine running for you. Yeah. Let me just say, I'll close here with these last six thoughts really quick. Okay. So I came up with this thing a long time ago, real quick called the Becker system. Okay. Becker okay. is my last name and B stood for better photos. So mm -hmm. no matter where you're at, get better. Okay. It's like, again, we all start somewhere and you start and you suck and then you get a little bit better and you get a little, but even if you kick an ass, you've been doing this for a long time, still you want to get better. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the E was for the experience, deliver an, an, an outstanding experience, make sure that absolutely love you and all that stuff. C in Becker was cultivate relationships. So again, that's the people skills and that's where you're, you're meeting with your bride and grooms and all that stuff and making sure that they like you. And then the other wedding vendors like you, uh, the catering managers, the, you know, the florists, all these people, you could cultivate those relationships. Also cultivate relationships with other photographers. Cause I actually got mm -hmm. a ton of business from other photographers. Cause instead of like com competing all the time, we were always about trying to help each other out. Uh, the mm -hmm. K is for killer branding, literally mm -hmm. invest in your branding. Um, and then E the second E is for, uh, uh, Oh, brain fart. <laughs> uh -oh. Um, I know no, I, haven't, I haven't taught this in a while, but you know, it's the, it's the, I can't even think of the word. It's like the workflow. Okay. The, Oh, I'm totally blowing it. Um, uh -oh. and now, that's okay. Now I can, just like, you if go to R if you know it, and then R, we can come back to R, you. for sure. R is ratitude, having a rad attitude, okay? So yes. that was that. Um, yeah, I can't even think the e, e, e. Efficiency, efficiency, okay? Efficiency, there you go. I got there. But it's, again, again, how you process your files, download them, back them up, running the actual business and stuff. So those six things, that basically covers everything in there. And, again, you might be great at three of them and, and not so good at the other three. So the three that you're not good at, work on those things or work on mm -hmm. whatever your weakest thing is, bring that level up. And, uh, you know, so beautiful. Well, man, what a great summary. I like that. And, um, I'll make sure to include that in the uh, show notes as well. Right but, on, uh, Becker, always a pleasure talking with you, my man. We should do this more often. Um, are you going to be in Vegas for WPPI next year? You know, I missed last year for the first time in 20 years and, yeah. uh, I, I'll, I definitely, I had stuff going on or whatever, but, uh, but I want to go back and I'm stoked that it's at the Mandalay Bay cause I love that hotel. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm still, like I said, a part of this photography industry. I am working on some other things right now, but, um, sure. but again, I, I love, I, photography will always be a part of my life and I, I love helping other photographers. That's why I wanted to do this podcast. And again, I love that you've been helping out people in this industry. And I'm just a big believer in like that whole pay it forward concept. And just to like, cause I remember when I was starting out, people were kind of, some people were really kind of rude to me and weren't really helpful. And then the other people were very helpful. And I'm like, God, I want to be like those people. 
So yeah. uh, is there's new people coming in there? I'm never threatened by the new guys. I'm like, I want those guys sure. to thrive and again, pay it forward and just bring the whole industry up because uh, it's, it's a cool business to be in. And uh, anyway, I really appreciate you having me on, bro. Of course, man. Such a pleasure. Thank you so much. And um, man, we'll be in touch. All right. Sounds good. All right. Take care, brother.